Welcome back to the Browns preview. G. Bush in the building. John Costco is always with me to preview from Pro Football Focus. I'm going to thank everybody for checking out the first two episodes. Browns defense, Browns offense, Chargers offense, Chargers defense. We did both of those. Make sure you go ahead and, and like those and make sure you watch those videos as well. This episode, we are going to finally get into the keys to the game, keys to victory for the Cleveland Browns coming up against the Chargers. John, we've talked about uh, the, the Browns uh, offense, and, and, and the Browns offense has played over, I think, over a lot of people's expectations. Right now, you guys don't have about the seventh best rated uh, offense, but they're the number one or number two rushing team. They've done enough to get enough points on the board to win these games. It's just that they, they've either special teams or defenses let them down. Uh, y- your thoughts on the, how they played so far and what they need to do in this game in order to beat a team who many think have a, a superior quarterback and are going to put up some points on a banged up Browns defense. Yeah, I, I think they need to be, keep running efficient offense. Um, you know, obviously feeding the rock that Nick Chubb is, has been, you know, good for them. But like they what they do well generally is switch things up in terms of keeping defenses off balance. So continue to do that. You've got, you know, Stefanski, it's kind of rests on Stefanski's shoulders to call almost perfect games. Not, not so much perfect because I think Brissett does a lot of good things to, to, you know, make up for maybe, you know, Hey, we need to sneak it on fourth and one. We can sneak it on fourth and one, but also defenses know that. And then you can play off of that as well. So you, it's not, it's a luxury you didn't have last year. Um, So I think, continue to keep the defenses off balance from an offensive perspective and just continue to put up points. You know, you talk about they've, they've tied the Jacksonville Jaguars for the six most points scored in the NFL through four weeks, which is insane. Uh, which is also insane is that the Detroit Lions are number one in that and they're one in three. So uh, it goes to show that you can't just only score points, but I think, um, you know, just continue to score points and do it in a way that they've been doing it, which is, uh, you know, obviously really efficient, efficiently moving the ball down the field and, and capitalizing in a red zone. Um, you know, we looked at uh, Nick Chubb in his game, and we, we talked about it earlier in the earlier episodes when we looked at the Browns' offenses. You know, Nick Chubb is right now, uh, I think, third or so uh, in, the, in the league in carries. Um, we haven't talked about Kareem Hunt a lot. Uh, it looks like Kareem Hunt is averaging maybe somewhere between 10 to 12 touches a game. Um and, you know, if we can't up the ante on the Chubb, um, is it something where the Browns might want to just give more those extra carries if they're going to run the ball a little bit more or down in distance when it can com- comes to giving the ball to Kareem Hunt? Yeah, at, at, you know, feeding feeding Nick Chubb, he's got 81 carries this year, which is, you know, he's on pace to to crack over 300 like we talked about in our, our you know, the first episode but uh, for this week. But the – you know, feeding it to Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt and utilizing those guys both on the field, you know, at the same time, um, you know, if you wanted to run the ball more, I, you know, if you have to run Nick Chubb 25 times in a game, I suppose you can do that, which is not a problem for him. Um, but you, the thing is, is what makes him so effective is that you've got Kareem Hunt that can spell him and make keep him fresh throughout the game. I think you've seen that with, you know, like with, like you go go watch Christian McCaffrey, go watch Derrick Henry. Those guys, you know, in, in a span of a couple of seasons, had like monster volume for them, and they had obviously from a fantasy perspective were, were phenomenal, and obviously for their, uh, you know, for their teams they did a lot of good. But the thing is, like that's that's not how you you can't play, you know, the long game like that. You know, I think that you get wore down. Um, and you've seen that with now, right now, Derrick Henry, he got injured last year. He doesn't have the same juice as he, he had, uh, you know, in his prime, neither does Christian McCaffrey. He looks like yeah. he's like 80% out there. You see him watching his doing his cuts and stuff like that. So keeping them fresh. And this is one reason why they didn't want to trade Kareem Hunt is that they, they need Kareem Hunt. They'd like to use him at the same time as Nick Chubb. And then when Nick Chubb needs a breather, he can, you can trust a, a guy to also be out there and be almost as, as effective in a run game as Kareem Hunt. I'm sorry, as Nick Chubb, because Kareem Hunt, he never fumbles, and he gets you five, almost five yards a pop when he's touching in in a run game. So I think it's you know it's a it's situation where they've got a one-two punch there that defenses really struggle to stop. And you think about this, like Derrick Henry through four games last year would have had the the the, the single total that the Browns duo has, but you split that between two guys, it makes you just that much more effective in the long haul. 
you know, let's let's move to the uh, to the defensive side of the football. You're going against a team and a quarterback that can make all your throws. Um, he can actually, you know, he he's underrated when it comes to extending plays. Uh, he's a he's a decent. He's a really good athlete. I shouldn't say decent. He's a really good athlete. I mean, he's not going to run around like Michael Vick or anything, but he certainly can use his leg to to get first downs when he needs. He certainly can extend plays and go downfield. Uh, you look at this game, Keenan Allen, if, if he doesn't play, say it's just Mike Williams and some of the other guys, a uh, uh, Palmer and, or, or some of the other guys, known names, the little known names there. Um, how are the Browns going to go about trying to stop this unit? Are they going to sit back and say, okay, well, let's just play coverage. We want to keep them in the, in the pocket. Or are they going to say, we got to come after them? Uh, what, is the, what is the key to victory here when you got uh, a team that can pretty much say they can either run it or pass it on you with the with the injuries that the Browns have up front. Yeah, the first step is having Miles Garrett and Joe Davey and Clowney playing. Um, that is the key to the game for the Browns <laughs> defense. Those guys playing. Um, but but in, in in reality, if you know, I think if they're playing, you have a lot obviously a lot better of a shot of, of being able to stop them and and you know, kind of play what it is that you want to play on defense. If they're not playing, you've got to switch some things up on defense, which is you've got to play some press, man. You've got to get the uh, their receivers disrupted in their routes uh, and allow for an inferior pass rush to maybe get pressure late in the drop back because you can't, you know, for one, Rashawn Slater is out for the year for the Chargers, which is, a, you know, he was one of the better offensive linemen in the NFL. Um, and if Keenan Allen's not playing that, you know, it's basically kind of two of their best players that are not on the field. You know, they got, they got, I think Jalen Guyton is also out, who is another really good player for them as well. So it, it brings down, Hey, you've got Mike Williams. Like you talked about Josh Palmer. Um, they got, they got a good player and a backup running back in Joshua Kelly, um, you know, to help dispel Austin Eckler. But the thing is Eckler out of the backfield is one of the best pass, you know, catching running back. So you've got to have, you know, JOK is going to, going to, got to have him be on him um and you got to get pressure on 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 Herbert like I said so switch things up if you if you don't have your two studs up front playing you've got to be able to switch things up on a back end to make to make Herbert hold on to it longer than he wants so before we get to our final predictions let's go ahead and get to this uh, or that uh will Nick Chubb have more touchdowns than Austin Eckler in this game yes yes uh, so you can so. go ahead I, I think so so I think you know, like Eckler's a good player, but like the the Chargers like to spread things around yeah. more often when they get into the red zone versus the Browns, where they like to run it more so in the red zone. I agree. I think I think they'll be super. I think Stefanski will have uh, ears, and he knows that people are going crazy talking about why are you passing the ball in the red zone. Uh, I think he gives it to Nick Chubb more consistently. I, I will say Nick Chubb has more touchdowns. Uh, will the Browns hold the Chargers to less than 330 passing yards? That's a big number. That's that's a that's real a, big. That's number. a really big number to say that they that they won't. And I think for for Herbert, he's got 1250 on a year. Uh, I'm gonna say they are not gonna hold him to under that. Um, so he's gonna get that. I say, think he's gonna. I think he's gonna get so, that. I'll he say gets, he gets about 317. <laughs> He had seven games over three over three thirty last year. Seven, yeah, and he had he had uh, a, like three others that were un- over three hundred but under three thirty. So yeah, oh, man, I he, might he, put, he puts him up. He puts him up. I might, just I might want to change. I I, I might want to change that. I wouldn't be surprised if he hit that three thirty. I say he still goes three seventeen. I'll just I'll sit right, right there. Uh, uh, well, Cooper and Njoku combined for more targets than Williams and Ever. Yeah. So, um, I, so um, as far as I know, I have to look at it, right? But I don't think Ever is a target monster, and neither is Williams. So those guys yeah. don't. He doesn't feed them a targets like you know if Keenan Allen is out there, like he feeds Keenan Allen targets. But like I said, Herbert likes to spread it around more to his his weapons. Um, and you know, you obviously utilizes uh, Austin Eckler in, in the passing game a lot too. So I think I would say that um, over would be for the, the Cooper and, and Njoku. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Cooper and Njoku. Uh, would a Browns rush for more yards, more than 160 yards as a team? Yes, I, I, the Chargers' run defense is not great, um, and I think we, especially without Bosa, they are not as good, right? So 
I think Nick Chubb had a big game notice in last year, and I think he's going to have another one. And then you can also add in the fact that Kareem Hunt is going to put up yards as well. So I think I think they both are going to, you know, have some big games here. I agree. Um, I, that was the easier one of these questions. I, I definitely think they get more than one sixty. Um, last question: Will Brissett th- throw at least half as many touchdown passes as Herbert? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. So. I mean, right? He 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 throws four. He only needs two, right? Right. He so, needs two, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't I don't see you know. Obviously, if he throws three, he needs two as well. But I think he can put up two touchdowns, no problem. Even if the dig- game dictates that it's a running game, I still think that there's a chance that he puts up at least half. Um, now that we've got that through, let's get right to the predictions. Um, your prediction and score for this game. It's a tough one. So I think I think the I really think the Browns can win this game. So they're not the Chargers are only favored by a point and a half as of right now. So it's not like it's they're they're like super heavily favored. And it was three and it came down a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. yeah. So and that I don't know if that's like, hey, Vegas is knowing something that maybe Miles and Clowney are gonna play because they move the needle for the Browns. I think that maybe people didn't realize that they did when after after what we saw this piece past weekend, um, I'm gonna predict here a t- 28 to 27 game that the Browns win. Wow, you're being you are a gracious fellow. I'm, right there. So, so I'm thinking my thought process on it is that Browns are gonna be able to run this, run it on them, and they're gonna the Chargers are gonna get maybe uh you know some late a late score on them but i think the browns i think coming off of a game that they should have won and thinking of how they lost last year to this team they're going to come out firing in all cylinders and i think miles and jv are going to play i if they don't play i don't see a win so like this is a this is the the issue i have with like making appreciations if they're not playing they're not winning yeah, I think they make a difference in this from a defensive perspective uh, i don't think Clowney or miles garrett will play and if they don't, I got them losing 34-24. They can't get off the field. They can't get Herbert off the field. Third down conversions are terrible. And they just can't put up enough points. They, you know, they don't have any major busts. But you don't need to have busts now against these good quarterbacks. They're just good. They can just put points on you. So um, that's where I'm going to go with it. Can the Browns win this game? Sure they can. Uh, is it an uphill battle without the two defensive of end? Yes, it is. Um, so we'll we'll see how it works out. Hopefully they can um, prove me wrong because I'm always willing to take that dub uh, and find wins where we can because if they can set themselves for, for this one, it's a winnable game against the Patriots coming up. So with that being said, it's G. Bush, John Costco. Thank you for watching the Browns preview. Uh, and make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. We will catch you.